Welcome to Transport Vlog, my name is Paul and I'm on the North South Concourse at Sydney Central Station. And in this video, I'm going to show you the new Metro platforms down below and give you an update on platform 13 and 14 that are above me as well. So the Metro platforms are directly below the new North South Concourse that opened in May 2023 and can be accessed via three banks of escalators along with two lifts. The first bank of escalators are towards the northern end, so are the closest to the new Northern Concourse with its feature roof and the Eddy Avenue entrance. The second bank of escalators are in the middle, and these are the closest for passengers going to and from Central Walk. And then towards the southern end are the third bank of escalators, and these are close to the toilets and the old pedestrian tunnel that goes to platforms 4 to 11. Each bank has three escalators, so that's nine escalators in total that connect the north-south concourse to the metro platforms below. For an in-depth tour of the north-south concourse that includes what is on the rear wall and why this canopy is not completely straight, do check out this video now appearing on the top right and is linked to in the description below as well. So I'm now going to use the first bank of escalators to get to the metro platforms below and these are just beyond the two lifts. The metro platforms are immediately visible as soon as you get on one of the escalators so passengers will naturally know that they're heading in the right direction. And as you can see, these escalators are very long. In fact, at 45 metres in length, these are now the longest escalators in the Southern Hemisphere. The Martin Place Metro South escalators come in at a close second, which means that Perth Airport Central Station, which used to have the longest escalators in the Southern Hemisphere, has been relocated to third place. The sandstone coloured walls on either side are made of glass reinforced concrete and feature a pattern that is also used on parts of the North-South Concourse. You can now see the rear of the second bank of escalators and the metro train departing from platform 26 on the right is a northbound service to Talawong. Notice how quickly it is accelerating out of the platform. And now coming into view on the left is platform 27 which is for southbound services to Sydenham. As you can see there is lots of space on this island platform which is 12 metres in width. This is 2 metres wider than other city extension stations that have island platforms, such as Crow's Nest, Victoria Cross or Barangaroo. And this island platform is 27 metres below ground. These platforms opened on Monday the 19th of August, along with the rest of the Sydney Metro City extension. And to see the very first train in public service, a race up the central station escalators and fascinating interviews with Howard Collins, Rod Staples, Peter Regan, Hugh Lawson and others, do check out my Sydney Metro City Extension opening day video, which is now appearing on the top right and links to this and other videos mentioned are in the description below. Anyway, back to the central station Metro Island platform and along the middle are help points, the typical Metro bench style seats, the standard glass bins, fire equipment and the teal coloured station name signs. And now for a train moment. Above the platform screen doors are dark glass panels that reflect light extremely well, but are really difficult to capture on camera. And attached to the top of these panels is a canopy-like structure that contains CCTV cameras, speakers and their associated cables. And somehow sitting on top of these structures are the distinctive sandstone glass reinforced concrete walls that extend most of the way to the north-south concourse above. So I'm now going to take a walk to the northern end of the metro platforms. So this is the base of the first set of escalators that I came down earlier and now the northern part of the metro platforms and then at the end are the two lifts. These lifts are the same design and capacity as the other new lifts on the upgraded parts of Central Station and can accommodate 27 passengers. Being right at the end of the island platform, the views are on this side only. And the lift offers the most uninterrupted views of the sandstone coloured glass reinforced concrete walls. At the north-south concourse level, the lift doors are on the opposite side, which means no need to turn around. And they face the lifts to the northern concourse at terminating platforms above, so making it easier for passengers to know where to go next. The other lift, which is now on the left, is a bit special. As you can see, there are three additional staff only levels. And you can see these three levels from down below. 
so as a mere mortal passenger, my only option is the Metro platforms. So now leaving the North-South concourse, and this is how the lift descending to the platform looks from the outside. Normally, the lift shaft has glass or solid sides, such as for this one that contains the lifts to the Charmer Street entrance. But with this lift shaft, most of the front has no glass, so you can geek out on the intricate lift workings. All Sydney metro stations have platform screen doors, so I'm going to talk about why modern metro systems have these and cover the reasons and benefits, including some you may not have thought of. So their most obvious benefit is to provide a physical barrier that will prevent passengers from getting onto the track or being hit by an approaching train. Sorry if that sounded a little graphic, but sadly this does happen on older metro systems such as the London Underground. They also prevent objects falling onto the track that could obstruct trains or be a potential fire risk. Platform screen doors allow trains to arrive and depart at higher speeds, even when the platforms are crowded, so that means shorter journey times overall. They allow the entire platform area to be used, with no need for a yellow line close to the platform edge, and that means more passengers can safely fit onto the platform. They reduce station dwell times, as passengers know where to stand, and these markings encourage passengers to form an orderly queue on either side of the platform screen doors. They discourage most passengers from boarding a train when the doors are closing, especially as the platform screen doors are a lot heavier and potentially more painful if you come into contact with one when boarding, and it's a bit embarrassing too if your clash with the doors ends up on YouTube. They can also be used to display passenger information such as route diagrams, directions to the lifts or which doors are closest to wheelchair spaces. Here at Central Station, and on all the new underground stations, full height platform screen doors have been installed. These extend to the walls above the platforms and have a couple of additional benefits. Firstly, they enable underground stations to be fully air conditioned, as they create a seal between the train's tracks and tunnels. So that's great for controlling the temperature, especially on very hot or cold days. And secondly, they reduce the noise from trains as they enter and leave the platform. Above the platform screen doors are orange lights. These flash as the doors are opening, then stay on until the doors are about to close. Then they flash as the doors are closing. And if you don't notice these lights, you'll definitely hear the prominent warning sounds and automated train door opening and closing announcements. Train doors opening. Train doors closing. The platform screen doors are similar to those used on the original Metro Northwest line. However, between the doors, there is one significant difference. On the Metro Northwest stations, there is strip lighting on the platform between the platform screen doors. This illuminates as trains approach the platform and then switches off once the train has departed. On the new city extension stations, you won't see these and I suspect most people won't notice their absence. Another thing you won't see on the new stations are these short fun phrases on the platform screen doors. While some people love them, others found them a little cheesy, so you'll need to visit the northwest stations to see these. Now returning to the north-south concourse via the central bank of escalators, and the views going up are pretty much the same from the north and south escalators as well. You can see the middle part of the north-south concourse ceiling, and light from the higher canopies on either side. This metal cable on the right and also on the left provides support for the whole escalator structure and they wrap around the underside as you can see here. Now close to the southern end of the metro platforms and this has a much lower ceiling. And that's because it's beyond the southern end of the north-south concourse. This lower ceiling blends in really well with the glass reinforced concrete walls on either side. And close to where the platforms finish, it curves to become part of the end wall and then an even lower ceiling that continues to the emergency doors. The ceiling is at this lower level until just before the southern bank of escalators. And then it begins to ascend gently, with more of the glass reinforced concrete walls now appearing below it. It reaches its full height about halfway along this bank of escalators. And when on them, you can see the point where the ceiling begins to get higher very clearly. And now approaching where it meets its maximum height. And further up these escalators, you can really notice the height differences. 
Now back at the southern end of the metro platforms, and from here you can peer through the glass screen to see the tunnels, so let's do that. Notice the rigid conductor rail above, that carries the 1500 volt DC of electrical current to the trains. These require less maintenance than traditional overhead catenary, which is the main reason for their use on underground sections. If you look closely, you may be able to see the copper wire. That's the bit that carries the current, which is collected by the train's pantograph. The rigid bar is held in place by insulated supports that are attached to the roof. On the right side are conduits for signalling and communications cables, and on the left are the steps down from the emergency walkway. And whilst I've been talking, you might have noticed a metro train in the distance. The train to Tellingbom is going to enter platform number 26. Please keep your personal belongings with you at all times. If you see unattended items, please do not touch them and notify metro staff immediately. The southern end is also the best place for a wonderful view of all three banks of escalators. And with Central being such an important interchange station, it's fantastic to see so many escalators here. It's definitely worth looking up for some magnificent views of the escalator structures, along with glimpses of the north-south concourse above. Here are some clips. Building the north-south concourse and the metro platforms below it required the demolition of three terminating platforms, and two of these have been replaced, but are yet to open. These are platforms 13 and 14. These were the original junctions that were in place prior to the old platforms being demolished. They were still there in November 2023, but by April 2024, they had vanished. Now this did surprise me at the time, but I've since discovered that platforms 9 to 14 are going to be lengthened to accommodate 10 car Marion trains, which means that the new junctions will now be further to the south. And work has already commenced to lengthen and realign platform 11. Some of the track has already been laid for platforms 13 and 14, along with the buffer stops, and the remainder of the track bed has the future rails and some of the sleepers. So with these platforms now being lengthened, I don't think we will see them coming into use until sometime in 2025. So that's the new Central Station Metro platforms revealed, along with a quick look at what is happening above. Please like this video, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't done so already, join my Patreon community, which now includes a great new chat facility, link to that below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.